Here is another micro lecture by Dr. Johnson that is going to be talking about blood pressure, the silent killer. The reason they call high blood pressure or hypertension the silent killer is because oftentimes people are not symptomatic and therefore they have no idea that they have high blood pressure and high blood pressure can increase your risk of having a heart attack or stroke. Here are the normal values when we look at blood pressure. So normal, we want our blood pressure to be under 120 over 80. If you are in between, you could be prehypertensive or hypertensive if you're in the red category. Again, it's important to get annual checkups to make sure that you are in compliance with that normal blood pressure and then trying to do some things to improve your blood pressure through medical nutrition therapy. One way is that when we see people who have hypertension or are prehypertensive, and then also a population of black, we want them to decrease their amount of sodium intake to 1500 milligrams per day. This is a slightly old recommendation, however, and I'll briefly talk about this new idea, which is called the dietary approach to stop hypertension. When we're looking at foods that contain a lot of sodium or salt, it's going to be mostly your highly processed foods and then when we dine out. So we can alter by cooking meals at home and eating more whole foods, which can improve our overall health for heart health. Um, and then we can use things like herbs and spices to flavor our food that is not salt because the average American is consuming 3,400 milligrams of sodium per day. The recommendation is less than 2,300 milligrams per day. And then those that are at high risk or on a low sodium diet will need to be consuming less than 1,500 milligrams per day. Now, newer research is starting to show that restricting your sodium intake is not the best way to control hypertension, but rather adopting the DASH diet, which stands for Dietary Approach to Stop Hypertension. Again, hypertension is just a really fancy word for high blood pressure. Now, they're not supposed to be these question marks, so I just apologize. They should just be pointing here. Now, the main emphasis of the dietary approach to stop hypertension is focused on three minerals. One, potassium, two, calcium, and three, magnesium. Now, increasing the amount of potassium and calcium, they believe decreases blood pressure, which they've shown time and time again in clinical research. The mechanism of action, which is MOA, is unclear. However, increasing the amount of magnesium in your diet acts as a vasodilator, meaning that it opens up the blood vessels, allowing more blood flow um, to get through to the heart and the brain. So the DASH diet focuses primarily on increasing the amounts of fruits and vegetables per day. In fact, they are recommending that you have four to five servings of fruits and vegetables per day. So you can see here that combining the amount, oops, I highlighted the wrong one, I apologize. Um, combining fruits and vegetables of at least 10, so at least 10 servings, eight to 10 servings of fruits and vegetables per day, allows you to reach the potassium intake. The average American is not meeting the potassium requirement per day, and that's because we're largely missing the amount of fruits and vegetables per day. Secondly, they do suggest an increase in whole grains. Now, whole grains are things like your whole wheat fiber, your whole wheat breads, your whole wheat um, pasta, all of that good stuff because that provides a lot of that magnesium. They recommend fat-free or low-fat dairy because it has a lot of calcium in it. They do recommend four to five servings a week of fruits, or I'm sorry, of legumes, nuts, and seeds. So legumes are things like soybeans or peanuts. And then they do suggest that less than six servings per day of lean meat, poultry, and fish. Um, so it's mostly plant-based with some of those very healthy lean meat animal products. And then we don't want to completely eliminate it because life is fun with all the healthy sweets, but we want to reduce our amount per week to maybe only five servings per week. And then we want a nice healthy dose of those healthy fats, things like olive oil or avocado oil um, that we can incorporate more into our diet. So that is the dietary approach to stop hypertension. The other diet that we can see is that this 
Mediterranean diet has been shown to decrease the risk of cardiovascular disease across the board. Now again, you'll notice some commonalities between the DASH diet and the Mediterranean diet showing that the bulk of the food items are going to be coming from things like whole grains and fruits and vegetables. The one piece that is pretty unique about the Mediterranean diet is this really high consumption of olive oil. That olive oil is essential for the Mediterranean diet because olive oil contains omega-3 fatty acid which help with anti-inflammatory properties. So these are some therapeutic diets that we can use to control our risk for cardiovascular health.